morning. It's, I, I was walking to here today, going through Tottenham Court Road, and saw your face massive mm-hmm. on the posters, Richard. That's first time for sort of that sort of exposure for you, isn't it? Uh, I suppose it is, yeah. I mean, I've done, you know, quite a lot here and there, but I haven't had my face on a, a poster, you know, front and centre like that. <laughs> In fact, you can see me on the Prince of Persia poster, but where you've got Jake and everybody, I'm down there, there's a tiny little picture of me on a horse in the bottom left corner. I was pretty pleased about that at the time. Anyway, so go. it's quite satisfying now, just sort of seeing yeah, it. It's quite, it's quite strange. I was on the tube the other day, and uh, I came onto the platform and I saw the poster on the wall and uh, there was a guy just sat standing staring at it like this and he looked at me and and then he, he sort of doubled, he was like, <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> like you know, he was <laughs> trying Amazing. to, it's like, he looks like him. And then I just got on the tube and uh, he sort of went, huh? <laughs> it's quite weird. <laughs> that's the first time that's happened. <laughs> and obviously this is a remake of the Nicholas Winding Refn film. Yeah. And let's not get boring bogged down. I presume you've both seen the original. No, oh, really? we haven't seen it either of us. Yeah, no. We were asked not to watch let's it. Let's go into that then. You were asked yeah. not to watch it by Lewis. I suppose because yeah. it was like an adaptation. It, will, it, You know, obviously it's called Pusher and stuff and it's along the same vein. There was a lot of things that were different. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so we didn't like go into it with, you know, this preconception of what we had to deliver, I suppose. I think it's a very different film. I think that's the first thing is that this film is much more stylized than the original. I think it's it's important that we weren't doing that. So I think it was counterproductive for Louise for us to watch that film and sort of in some way try and emulate what, what they did in the original. What then did he ask you? I mean, did he ask you to watch anything before you <clears throat> became involved with this or what, as you were making it? Um, Goodfellas. Yeah. Like, like, you know, stuff that... You know, he loved to watch. I think stuff that was more akin with the style and the, the yeah. type of film he wanted to make. Yeah. And it creates a, a very different feel to London, this film. I think that was, that was for me anyway, that was one of the, the, the most exciting things is uh, to take a, a, a drugs, a guns, East End story and give it a different spin, you know. And I think that yeah. was, Luis was, it was brilliant. I suppose, like with um, you know, always being Spanish and coming to, and shooting a film in London, and it being through different eyes. You know, someone that's doesn't know it like the back of the hand, or yeah. you know, you walk down a street and you don't notice stuff. It was like, you know, when I watched it, I was like, oh my god, yeah, you know, oh that bit, you know. So, mm. I think that was really beautiful about it, and how uh, elegant in a way it looks. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though it looks very vibrant. Yeah. Uh, and live to yeah. see London. It's like almost like an animal. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. And I mean, that style that this film has, obviously, I think it would be remiss not to mention it has inspired comparisons with Nick Swinding Refn, the producer's sure. um, most recent film, yeah. Drive. I'm curious how you guys feel about that and also how you perhaps feel that might impact <laughs> on audiences. Well, I think it's probably can only be a good thing. I mean, I, I do yeah. think it is probably more like Drive than, than the original Pusher. The thing is as well, which is really interesting, that when we were actually filming um, Pusher, Drive hadn't come out yet. It was just, um, it was actually at Cannes, wasn't it? Yeah, Cause it was about Nick, to come out. Yeah, so, you know, you know, Louis hadn't seen it, and so it was kind of um, this nice parallel, I suppose, and if it is being compared to that, yeah. like, it's such a great film. That's, yeah. It's great. It's actually, I'm, I'm actually, because this is going to sound a little like arse kissing and I apologise, but I actually, when I watched it, I thought your performance in this had a similarity to Carrie Mulligan's in Drive in terms of that stillness. And I thought that was a deliberate thing, but if... Oh, yeah, no. That was... Um, yeah, I'd like, you know, I just saw that when it came out in the cinema. Mm. You know, we shot this like a year and a half ago. So, um, yeah, Drive hadn't come out yet. So, but she's an amazing actress. And obviously, both of you guys have this experience on Megabucks Hollywood Productions. So, uh, something much smaller, London-based. How's the the comparison for you guys coming in? 
Well, I think, you know, a film, making a film is making a film, and there are different degrees, different budgets, whatever, but at the end of the day, it was, uh, this was an incredibly rewarding experience because we were really up front and center and in the thick of it. You know, there was no, there were no trailers, there wasn't a huge base camp of, you know, <laughs> tents and, and millions of people running around. We were literally on the streets just uh, running around, yeah. weren't we, or in the flats uh, where we were filming or whatever. It was much more low-key and, uh, you know, it's it's it was very satisfying actually very fulfilling for me yeah it's very mm-hmm. alive you know yeah. very like much in in reality you know with the club scenes and yeah. you know like it's not as if like it was like shutting down this area of london you know it was still like alive with the people that were like you know going about their everyday stuff so that was like an element which was really refreshing yeah yeah and I feel like because it was so low key and so low budget, you can sort of sneak in, and you know. And whereas if you're in a huge blockbuster, there's no mistaking that the, the, the Hollywood's in town. You know, there's this huge, yeah. massive hundreds of people. We just kind of came in into clubs and snuck around and did some secret filming, yeah. and <laughs> it was uh, really brilliant. So the clubs were actually open. Yeah, well, uh, some of them were. Some of them were proper big club nights. And I was saying earlier, it's the only time I think you can get away with as a lead actor walking through a packed club with a camera crew following you with a handheld camera and nobody bats an eyelid. I mean, everybody <laughs> was just like so into into their dancing and things. Fantastic. Mm. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you.